Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not To Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Walking Dead World Beyond. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. We're talking about the penultimate episode, ladies and gentlemen. Obviously, we're picking up in the aftermath of last episode where... Uh, People have, you know, they've sent people down the tunnels expecting to run into the scientists when in actuality uh, they counted on that because with um, because they had Huck's help to know exactly how they would respond under what circumstances. So also showed you like how well not only how well, because I guess she knows the protocols because about to say like I think that takes a tactical mind to know what moves exactly they're going to make. But it's like, right, if you control what's going to happen, you know exactly how they're tactically going to respond because their protocols are to respond a certain way. And she knows that Jadis is someone that sticks by the books. I mean, to be fair, she apparently trained Jadis. So everything Jadis knows, she knows, too, because it's like I taught you. So like I know probably the book better, you know, because also with her mom and everything. Plus, she already had military training from the beginning. We already know that. So I think that she already had that bit of an advantage in many uh, other regards. But they sent a whole bunch of walkers down there and they detonated a whole bunch of places. All the different tunnel entrances that they could be coming after them. They detonated them all, like lured them in and killed them. And it's like the thing of like, right, they know they're killing people. But it's like these soldiers, have they done anything explicit? They're just people following orders. But, you know, it's like, right, there's no going back from here. We got to make our move. We got to make our mark. And so by one by one, you know, and it's and I think they did this on purpose so that not just like this way, no one's hands clean. It's like we all took a part. We all like um, took part in this. So like everyone's detonating one because that way it's not on just one person. Like everyone's taking lives in this situation. Like I said, they might be CRM, but they're still innocent because they're just people following orders who are about this. And it's like, have they necessarily done something evil? No, but it doesn't make them intrinsically good or evil. They're just people. It's just like you're just straight up killing people. So obviously, uh, Jadis wasn't too happy about all of this, especially when she found out that, um, they have Mason. At first, she didn't believe them, but it's like, oh, no, we have Mason. And it's like the whole thing of like, right, you killed innocent people, which I love the hypocrisy of like, oh, you're talking about them killing your soldiers. You What about the 100,000 plus people you killed? The whole Omaha situation. It's like, no, nah. like it's it's a different circumstances. That was kind of a necessary evil. This is just you being evil. It's kind of how Jadis almost wants to put it. But um, things aren't going great because on the flip side of things, luckily... Uh, well, on, on one front, you have um, Elton as well as uh, Silas helping him out because he, luckily Dennis is alive, but he's suffering from the gunshot wound. And so Elton's there to kind of pull the bullet. I know Silas is like, right, um, you know, thank you. And he was like, oh, don't, like, he's like, do you want me to call, because um, he was like, thank you for doing this. He was like, I wasn't just doing this for you. He's like, do you want me to call, like, you know, Huck, I could try and get her on the radio. He's like, no, can't take the chance to blow her cover. But he's like, I appreciate you trying to do that for me in case I don't make it and everything like that. But um, luckily, Elton was able to pull the bullet out. At first, I was kind of worried. I'm like, oh, uh, I was like, the bullet didn't, like, break apart or something. But I'm like, I, I don't, I mean, because because bullets, if they hit, I think if they hit bone, they could. Well, I guess where it, where it struck him, it wouldn't have, like, shattered. I think if it probably hit bone or something, it would have shattered. And then you'd have to dig in for the pieces. But I guess it's like, no, got the, the, luckily the entire, the bullet was, it wasn't a through and through. And it didn't shatter. So, they, Elton was able to kind of pull it out and wouldn't go. So, problem is, though, there's no antibiotics. So, uh, they've got to deal with a plan where they're basically ga gathering up a whole bunch of walkers. It's kind of like the go-to move in this universe when you're planning on attacking someone. It's like, get, I mean, well, you had the uh, Whisperers that was... Well, that was kind of an offense and a defense for them. But in general, this is like the offensive move in this world. I mean, usually it's... Well, like I said, a lot of times it gets used defense-wise. Because it's just like you're usually leading an army of walkers somewhere else. So it's meant to kind of avoid that aftermath. I mean, we've seen it at the beginning of Season 6. We've seen it with the uh, leading um, the Whisperers, like uh, Guardians, like off the edge and stuff. You know, stuff like that. So... But um, this time, this is an instance of weaponizing them. I mean, to be fair, they were just like weaponized um, using the uh, Grounders tactics uh, in the last two or so episodes of 
the first part of the final season of The Walking Dead. Most recently in The Walking Dead. We'll, we'll just leave it at that. Uh, but uh, Silas and Elton are meant to lead them towards the facility. But Silas wants to stop and get some stuff for... Um, get the anti uh, antibiotics for Dennis. Because despite everything, it's like Dennis has been good to him. Because, once again... He, there's very few adults he can count on one hand that have done right by him. Because even, because he, and I love that explanation of like, you know, it's like, because even Dennis had apologized, like, I'm sorry for what she did to you. And, and he even, like, Silas has forgiven her because he's like, yeah, at the end of the day, she was just doing what she thought was right, you know. Um, it basically was saying, like, they, they had that back and forth about, like, hell, um, it, you know, it's a lot of hurting and stuff like that. So it's just kind of... Uh, kind of, I'm butchering it, and I'm not even paraphrasing it right. But he he, had, he was he's been a little bit more for, forgiving of uh, Huck, understanding like why she's done she's done. Because like Dennis was like that too. He believed in what they did. Granted, neither one of them knew as how far the CRM was going to go, but they knew in general they believed in the CR and what it represented, and even the CRM not knowing until recently just how deadly they could be. But uh, sadly, when they were looking for antibiotics at the facility. Sadly, the person they ran into was Webb. He's the dude that got sent off. Like, because of the trio, he was the first one that was sent off. Uh, I'm wondering where the other two are. They might not be back at that facility. Like, Dennis must have sent them elsewhere to do other stuff or relocated them at the time because we haven't seen them for a while. I want to say the last time we saw one of them was when, um, a couple of episodes back when, um, when Silas was leaving to go meet up with Iris and them, like, after it's like, oh, you, if we don't show up, you get out of here if we're not here by, like, 2.30, that whole thing. I think that was the last time we saw one of them, so we haven't seen any of them then. Like I said, I, I think Dennis might have referenced it in a previous episode, like he might have sent them off somewhere. But, I, yeah, I'd actually for, slipped past the point I was trying to make earlier. I'm, I'm sorry for being a little uh, scatterbrained on this. But the point I was making just, like, early was, like, yeah, Silas, it, the reason why he's going so far for Dennis is because, like, Dennis is one of the few adults that's ever been nice to him, good to him, considering his family situation. Like, male figures in his life haven't always worked out because of, like, we saw what happened with his dad. And I guess things were okay with his uncle, but, like, he just had he hasn't had the most good experience. I mean, because even, like... Felix and the others turned on him when he, well, I mean, to be fair, he turned on himself when he thought he killed, um, like he did something to Percy and Percy's uncle. Uh, but aside from that, it's just like, um, Dennis is the only person that's been like, like really good for him and good to him and taking care of him. So it's like, right, I'm going to do the same thing for you because at the end of the day, he's also like, I know you're a good guy at heart. So, um, but, like, so, but circling back to, um, well, circling forward back to where I was, weirdly enough, um, it's the dude, like I said, um, he's there and he realizes like Silas is one of the insurgents. I mean, to be fair, Silas didn't spend a lot of time with him. I feel like out of anyone, he's probably closer to the other two than he is this web, but still it's like, right, I don't want to hurt you. And so like, I mean, to be fair, like, um, Elton kind of knocked him out. So it's like, yeah, because he, he was going to kill Silas, um, and he was saying, like, yeah, he was even going to let Dennis die because he realizes, like, if you're here and Dennis is hurt, then that means Dennis is a part of this. So, like, then he'll just have to die. But um, as they're getting medication, there are walkers everywhere. And poor Webb, he woke up and got bit. I was curious whether or not they'd open the door. But it's like, hey, if we open the door for you, how are we sure you're not just going to immediately try and kill us afterwards either? So, poor bastard gets ripped apart. Once again... I think you also have to think about the element, too, of, like, well, Silas actually got to his, <laughs> the up thing is, his real friends, the true friends of people he really cares about, so you're kind of, like, sadly a necessary sacrifice if it means, like, helping them out, if it means helping out Dennis, so, uh, luckily, they got inside of, um, the little spear thing that Indira kind of helped make, kind of, of the globe, and they basically rolled their way past all the walkers, so, that helped. You, you don't typically see circumstances like that. Um, in the walking, I mean, you you can see stuff get weaponized like that, sure, but that particular circumstance is something you'd only probably see in this show. I don't think you'd ever really see something necessarily used of that nature. I mean, you wouldn't find anything like that. It's just because this is a CR facility and, um, uh, Elizabeth had that, uh, commission for, uh, by Indira, so they were luckily able to get out, but, um, on the flip side of uh, dealing with the, uh, you know, at the facility and everything. So, now that they do have 
Mason, he is their, um, like I said, their their insurance policy. Basically, Leo leaves with some of the scientists that basically he's going to make them make the CRM think like, oh, like all of us are on board when we're not in actuality. Um, it's a it's, you know, kind of like to get them looking one direction. Yeah. Classic Kansas City shuffle. And once again, I keep going back to that because that's always like, you know, uh, look at the left hand while you're while you're you're so focused on the left hand you're not seeing what the right hand is doing. It's a typical like illusion thing, but I always refer to it. If this is your first time ever hearing me mention it, because I mention it a lot, I call it the Kansas City Shuffle because of the movie Lucky Number Seven. Because I actually really love the num movie Lucky Number Seven. I need to rewatch. I've not seen it in a couple years, but I've watched it multiple times, and that was just the whole thing in it. But it's it's your typical magic trick of while you're distracted with this hand, you're missing what's happening over here. Um, but even Mason's kind of calling them out for what they're doing, even saying like you can't really um because he's on he doesn't know about what's going on here, which Percy is like, oh, like should maybe we should tell him like what's up because everything down here is good old dad, uh General Bill, like this is all his operation. So um So Hope and Felix uh go and they're trying to track down the gas. Sadly, the gas has already been moved. And uh, Hope ends up dealing with a walker because at first, like what he had said about like, I think it was a uh, it was a line from Mason about like, right, you're going to destroy this place and everything here kind of being like he was calling them out being like, oh, you're going to destroy everything that was built here. But it's like this place was built on like blood and lies and death like oh anytime someone stepped out of line you killed like what kind of place is built on a foundation of that like that match genocide of people he didn't know at the time but we'll get to that later on um that knowing still doesn't change things in certain regards but it like hope finally solidified in her mind because she was bouncing back and forth because she kept giving this place a chance like no this place is good like the crm is the issue but now she realizes like no like thinking about Lila's lies and what Huck told her because Huck was force feeding her the same BS that Huck was, you know, part of this cult and believing. So it's like, no. And she's like, fuck this place. Screw this place. This place can go to hell. Like she's done. Like, and I'm not going to fight. This place isn't worth fighting for because like killing that Walker was a reminder of just like, uh, cause I don't know if that was supposed to be, I don't think it was, but that's why I was like, is that why you were thinking about Lila? Is that some, cause like they showed the tattoo and I was like, is that supposed to be Lila? Cause I don't, rem I couldn't tell if that was supposed to be her. I don't think it was, but I could be wrong. It might've been. So that might've solidified it even more, but it's like, right. Like all the death and stuff. It's like, yeah, it doesn't make up for, cause this entire place is built on like, you know, the plan of like killing so many people with the Omaha and the campus colony. It's like, no, 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 no. I'm, you know, this place isn't worth keeping around. Like it's just keeping it around. It's just eventually going to allow them to rebuild what they have. And it's like, can't let that happen anyway. So it's like, you know, now she's probably, she's definitely more on Iris's team of like, let's burn this place to the ground, which speaking of Iris, her and Percy, which let's go to be fair. I'm like, I was nervous the entire time. I'm like, legitimately anyone in the show can get it. Like, um, in this, God, when I say that, like, obviously the du double entendre in my head kicks in because I'm like, I like that. Because when you use that, usually that's what that turn of phrase means, but I use it in a me me sub means of anyone can get got in a sense of like killed. But when you just say like, oh, anyone can get it, it's just like, it makes me think of sex. Like in the regard of like, oh, they can get, like, you can get what I'm trying to say. It's just like, I just made myself laugh a little bit thinking about that. But regardless, like what I mean is like, I don't think anyone's necessarily safe. Cause I mean, truth be told is I get the feeling like, man, it could be a po strong possibility. This is a depressing ass show where like everyone could end up walking away dead and it could be like a necessary sacrifice thing. I mean, I watched something not fairly recently, but recently enough that you're like, Jesus, everyone's dead. That I was like, I didn't, there was something that ended away and I was like, I didn't expect it to end with literally 98% of the characters. Let, let's bump that up. Screw it. 99% of the characters are all dead. Wasn't expecting that. So it's it's one of those things of like, it, it could still happen in this regard, you know? But it's just this, like the moment Percy's like talking about the future, that should have been a key sign of like, oh cool, it's that, oh man, I'm one day away from retirement type of thing of like, you know, for so long in the world, it was just him and his uncle. And now he's thinking about the future. Like he wants to, you know, make a little place for him and uh, Iris. And you're like, oh, that's sweet. And you're just like, mm-hmm, is that going to work out? Probably not. 
especially when they find out the gas is going in. It's like, right, we got to find the gas, but it's like, no, it's too late. The walkers are already here. Like, they already know what we're up to, hence why they moved in in the first place. So we got to we gotta find some other way to track it down later. But for, for now, we got to leave. Obviously, Iris is pissed because she was like, if anyone knows Mason, but Mason's like, I know, have no idea what's going on. That's the thing I'm curious about. Like, I don't think he was lying. I think he genuinely had, genuinely, genuinely had no idea what was going on but um by the time they got to the surface Jadis was already waiting for him locked and loaded and you know Felix his only play is like right I'm gonna threaten to kill um I'm going to threaten to kill Mason if you don't back down and it's like yeah you go ahead and do that you lose your leverage and then we will pump you full of bullets and obviously once again it's that conversation of this is all for the greater good because it turns out they didn't have the entire plan with like the Portland, uh, um, Omaha, and the campus colony. It wasn't like they went into this with a plan of like, oh, we're eventually going to genocide everyone. You know, it's like, no. It was like two years ago they shifted things because someone had predicted that base. No, it might not even been two years ago, but at some point someone predicted that two after two years of things being continuing as they are between like the three groups that eventually it would take a heavy hit on the CR's resources and that none of the other like places in particular like Omaha or anything would be able to survive without the CR giving the bulk of it. Like the CR, it gives its resources and kept these other like communities going. And it's like, if we don't have enough to sustain you, you're all going to fail. And it's like, right. A thousand would have died and stuff like that and died slowly starved. So it's like, what we did was a mercy killing but it's like who gives you the right to um uh, decide who gets to live and die but it's like what we're doing is so important it's for the sake of the future are you really going to let the future die here like you know you doing yes you're mad at us but it's are you really going to let the future like because it's like the because the plan is like we'll go out there and we'll continue this research but it's like you will never find another place like this with all them the the power and resources and facilities you need because there's no because it's like yeah hope knows there's nothing out there grant which i think it's so funny considering like she knows there's other communities out there, and I'm like, I wonder has she said anything to um, the CRM about like Alexandria and them? Because like the Walking Dead crew, just the OG Walking Dead crew, they have not like encountered like this CR. The last CR related stuff was when Jadis and Rick left. That's it. So there's still nothing. I mean, you know, then you also have a community like the Commonwealth. So it's like they're not aware. They're aware of some of the communities not every community i mean because you also because also i brought this up previously like the time frames aren't all one-to-one -one because like i think the walking dead is the furthest in the future and then i would say may, maybe fear and world beyond might be in the same time frame i'm not 100 percent sure i still feel like world beyond is further behind in the timeline like further in the past maybe maybe that like it's, i've talked about this before maybe there's some clearer um, clarification out there online. Maybe there's some information that I'm not remembering off the top of my head, but like, because I, once again, it's like, it's the fall happened 10 years ago here, but it's like, it's been maybe 12 years in The Walking Dead based on the Negan episode, made it seem like it was like 12 years ago. So it's like, it may be, you at least be like a, a year and some change, if not a full blown two year like time difference, whatever the case may be. Because um, once again, it also comes down to like, well, how much time passes in between seasons? It's like, well, season one and season two like picked up immediately, but like, how long was like like the road for them to get Iris? Like, you know, Huck planning out her plan, and like, how long were they on the road before they got caught? Like a couple weeks and stuff like that. So maybe this entire show is taking place. Like, for example, both seasons in totality, from beginning to where we are now, it's maybe it's only been a month or something like you know. So it might be something like that, where it's like. We know there's been a good chunk of time in between some of the seasons of Fear the Walking Dead. So, you know, it's never like a full, clearer picture in some regards with the time frame. I I'm a little all over the place, but I'm kind of going on a bit of a tangent. But my whole point was like, Jadis is aware to some extent the other communities. And also, like, has she ever bothered 
checking back in on any of them like you know where that is but i guess it's like no maybe she just assumes like eh, like they're not big enough communities for it to matter they'll eventually get wiped out because there's nothing there so like i mean even for what we know based on fear and the walking dead that there are no like facilities like the crm like facility here so like being able to do what the scientists are able to do here they would not be able to replicate it easily i mean the only other place they'd be able to do that would be the cdc but we know that got destroyed years ago at the beginning of the walking dead so the guy that was there like blew up the facility so you wouldn't find many working active facilities to be able to do what they want to do and need to do but like i said circling back to it it's just like jadis is like she's so like once again it's like you sip the kool-aid so much it's like yeah, I mean, it's not like you were inherently a good person. You were just doing what you could to survive, like most people did. You adapted and changed to kind of fit to be what you need to be. But I never knew that you would shift into the person you are right now, that you would just co-sign just killing 100,000 people and be like, it was the right thing to do, that it was a mercy killing. And doing it to Portland is going to be a mercy killing because we're doing because once again, it comes from the fact is that the, the CR has got to be because like, wouldn't it make sense to just be like, right, just cut ties with them and just if they're going to die, they're going to die. Like, wouldn't that make more sense than like literally wiping them out? Because, to be fair, you're testing out what you're going to do, but you're also like, ah, you it would have led to this anyway. It's like, you don't you don't know that for a fact, but it's also like, I think it's still the thing of, right, there's a limited amount of resources in the world. You guys are just going to, like, the CR is still the lifeboat. It is the ark, and that we need to make sure everything gets pumped in, pumped into it. So, if we need to, we'll take what we need to from these other places, make sure some of you survive. She even references, like, apparently, like, 10,000 children from the... Um, Omaha, like, campus colony thing were saved. The others were just left to die. But it's like, a lot of kids were ripped away from their parents and stuff like that. Plus, like, the necessary people like Hope and Leo, for example, and stuff like that. So, it's just, in her justification, it's like, no, you're, you, I'm, you know, I'm not one of those people. I didn't agree with Thanos, and I don't agree with you about yours because it's like no one made you the arbiter to decide humanity's fate. You want to save humanity? That's great. You just don't have to go about being a piece of shit to do it. And because once again, it's it's not like this. The CR hasn't even co-signed this. This is purely the military of the, the CRM making these choices. It's like because you know you're in a wrong because you're keeping it from because you know that the uh, the CR would like put you in your place for doing this but like i said it's just it's about to ensure that the cr keeps going and that it keeps uh that is you know we're, we're going we're destined to save the future maybe not tomorrow maybe not 10 years from now maybe it'll be well we're ensuring the next 500 years and blah 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 like our sacrifices will be necessary sacrifices will be necessary for the greater men of saving this world like they they believe themselves because no one else is in this world being like oh i'm ready to say the last time we had that in this series was um eugene and that ended up being a bold face lie but that was the last glimmer of that i mean because like the cdc kind of made rick realize like oh there is no no, you know, he found out the truth and he spilled the beans to everyone in the season two finale of like, right, we're all infected. The moment we die, we're going to come back. But obviously their ambition isn't just like wiping out the dead. It's stopping reanimation, preventing more dead to come about in the future. So it's like, but it's like no one's had such a grand scale plan of like, oh, I'm going to save the world. I don't think there's any saving this world. This is the way the world is generations from now. Maybe I don't because I don't think this. I mean, and this is coming from someone who hasn't read the comic. I don't know if the... I mean, the comic was... I mean, this series isn't about finding a cure. It's about people trying their their way to survive and make the world what they want it to be and find a way to survive. Like, that's what everyone is doing. The CRs just took it upon themselves to be like, no, we're going to be the arbiter, arbiters of, like, leading this world into a new age eventually down the road. We're going to be the ones to save the world. It's like, no one else has those notions. Everyone else is just trying to find a way to survive some way, shape, or form, you know? Like I said, I just think it's so interesting, like, Jadis' justification for all that, you know, has happened and all that she's done. You know, and it's just, once again, it's just like, and you guys are, you're mad at us for killing, like, a lousy 90,000 people. Who cares? You know, it's like, and yes, we're about to do it again. So what? Who cares? We're saving the world. It's just like, 
yeah, but what if you don't save the world? Even 500 years from now, that means everything you've done was for naught. Like they, they can't, they cannot, and will not even allow themselves to even think, "Oh, we can't do it." You know, you won't see it in your lifetime. I won't see it in my lifetime to, to reap the benefits of it, but a generations from now will. You know, so you know, they once again they, they're sip, sipping on the uh, metaphorical Kool Aid in this regard. Sadly, Mason ended up getting away, and Percy went to chase after him. And in the in the shots being fired type of situation, uh, Percy ended up got dying because Huck ended up helping him because she couldn't sit on the sidelines anymore, listening to all this. It's like, is this really like what this is supposed to be? And it's like, I can't let them die. I can't keep my cover. It's not worth it. And she protects him. And I guess Jadis legitimately didn't see this coming. I wonder, was it Jadis that moved everything? Because like, once again, we haven't. I, maybe this speaks volumes. Have not seen Elizabeth for a while. She's so like, what's up with that? I mean, she might just be off dealing with other stuff at the time, but um, it's kind of like, well, it's well. To be fair, it's like, right, your mom was right about you being the treacherous person that you are, but um, it's sad that Percy ended up dying, and in that moment, like Iris just drops next to his body because one of the CRMs that was firing shot him clean in the head. I was like, Jesus, um, no, like wounded, being able to have any last words. And Hope just walks over and picks up the gun. I'm like, she's about to pop, Mason. And he's like, no, this is his fault. He deserved it. She deserved it. Because it's like all that you're trying to destroy. And she's like, I should have listened to Iris. Like, you are them. It's like, you heard the explanation of everything they're doing. And that's the thing. Like, before you can make the justification, you're like, well, Mason doesn't know what they're up to. It's like, you heard what they're going to do, what they did, what they're going to do. And yet, you were close enough to hear it. It's not like you didn't hear it. You heard it, and you still let things play out that way. Like It's like, Hope promised you she would not let anything happen to you, but it's like, you're like, oh, I can't let these rabble rousers have their way. These No, it's like, this is, you know, and it's like, and he's kind of pleading for his life at the end there. It's like, you caused all this. You did this. I mean, this is your, you know, it's like they're trying to fight for their own survival. You know, their people were killed People in Portland are going to die. You you live in Portland, isn't it? Wasn't that the whole point of like, or at least some of the kids live in Portland and stuff like that. It's like your friends, like their family is there and you're really going to be okay with that? Like this mass genocide. And it's like, Iris is like, she, Hope was like, Iris was right about you. You are them. Like she kept trying to be like, not everyone here is the CRM, but he, he believes in this wholeheartedly. So, and in that moment, it's just like, but, Iris tells her not to do it because it's it's not worth it because she knows what killing Elton's mom did to her. Like what, you know, that guilt did to her. And it's like, I don't want you to do that again because despite everything, even though he hasn't necessarily done anything, it's still his fault this all happened. But also it's like, you don't want his death on your conscience. Like, you know? Because it's kind of a similar situation to some extent. Um, as with the thing with Elton's mom, so they end up leaving. Um, Jadis ends up protecting Mason, and so Huck was able to get away like the others were. Um, and Huck made her way back to, um, Dennis and checks in on him, and just, you know, it's ha you know, just happy that he's alive. But in that moment, she kind of breaks down, like, after she was leaving, because I think it is the thing of, basically... Because she had said, like, right, my mother has nothing to do with this. I think it's because because of her treachery. I think the implication could be, like, her mom's going to suffer the ramifications of, like, right. But also, it's like, she's she'd already kind of turned her back on it to some extent. I'd already kind of walked away from everything that she cared about. But it's still the thing of, like, right, I'm, uh, I think maybe, you know, it's probably the Percy thing on top of the fact is of, like, the life you led is gone. Like, you can't go back to the CR. You can't be a part of this. Like, you're forever away from your mom, and your mom might catch a bullet because of you. Or worse, she might get bitten. Like, whatever the case may be. Like, if whatever befalls your mom happens because of you. Because she's the last family you have left. So, despite your differences, she's still your mom. So, I think a, a combination of all that is kind of, like, really hitting her. And, um... Felix went to go check on Leo because they'd already um, laid down the um, spike traps. And now, like, some were sent on ahead, but some of the other scientists are stuck behind. And so, Felix goes to help Leo out and Hope and Iris are there. And luckily, Elton and um, Silas made their way there and, you know, learn about what happened to Percy. 
And I think it's a beautiful moment of them all hugging and being there. So, you know, they're fully reunited again. And even the fact is Hope and Elton hug each other, too. So it's like, I think, you know, it, it took some time, but he was able to, you know, he was kind of avoiding her before. But now it's like, you know, I think he found his answer after last episode. He's like, no, I, what he found it somewhat before. But I think last episode kind of solidified it a little bit more, his answer about how to feel about everything but it's like right them all hugging together like all four of them finally fully together again you know being able to hug each other in that moment it's it's nice to see it all come full circle like that for them um but uh jadis it's like right thank you general bill like it's like the scientists i'll get them back and the traitor i'll bring her to justice so she's not going to kill um Jennifer, uh, maybe we'll see how pissed she gets, but I think it's more so like, I'm going to bring her in front of you and she's going to be tried and judged. I mean, she's pr de pretty much dead, but it's probably going to be like, no, I'm going to bring you in front of everyone. And uh, But Huck ends up contacting them because she found all of the gas that they had moved. So, right, we need to see four, we need to blow this up. Because for them, it's like, Beyond this, the CRM had already won because despite us getting away, they still had the gas. But now it's like they know where the gas is. So, final moves, ladies and gentlemen. Next episode is, in fact, the series finale. So, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how this plays out, but also like what this means for the universe. Once again, to my recollection, only thing I haven't watched this week's episode of Fear, but I'm sure the whole Owl thing might be. The whole Al and um, Isabel situation is going to be like the last tie to the CR in that. You know? So I think going forward, the last time we touch on like some of the CR stuff, if not unless something happens in the next two parts of the final season, The Walking Dead in the next, um, the last, what, chunk of episodes essentially, um, whether or not the CR comes back back comes up in that regard i'm assuming that's going to be movie related stuff with stuff of like rick and stuff so but like i said we don't know if everyone in this series is going to walk away alive who's going to live who's going to die um and even if they win like the crm won't be stopped they might have stopped this it might have slowed them down but where do they go after this um they you know they're going to try and warn portland but it's like if they could get rid of the gas then cool but that doesn't mean the crm won't start it up again because I doubt we'll ever see General Bill. I think General Bill and stuff will probably be a movie thing. You know, will Jadis die? Will um, Mason die? Like, Or will they be like things we see circle back in later points in the continuity? Just that is every, all, everything Walking Dead? Or will it be specifically the movie stuff? I don't know. It's, it's definitely going to be interesting to see like not only how this ends. Because... Even if this is the end to these stories, it is this universe. So, like, these stories could, depending on how things play out, could continue on at some other point in the universe. Like I said, if the time is a little off, you know, could, we could see potentially these characters pop up in other capacities. Maybe, you know, it, like I said, it just depends on how they play it. I mean, for one, just how this ends, but also, like, the ramification and implications it will, the ending will have for the greater Walking Dead universe. It's definitely going to be interesting to see how this all comes to an end. And where it goes beyond that. Uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. Until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, little light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.